Good afternoon. Um, my name is Ruptus from Swiss Digital Exchange in Zurich. I'm happy to have you here. I think I have the honor to entertain you for the next 30 minutes after lunch. So your stomach is probably full and you feel a bit more tired, but I hope I can energize you up a little bit with something what we believe is a really, really cool idea, uh, a business proposal, um, which we believe will, in a shape or form, change the world, how financial markets will operate in the future. Um, the original idea when SDX decided to enter into the path of digitalization was pretty simple. Our mother, the Six Group in Zurich, analyzed the market space and figured out there is a lot of action going on in the Far East crypto space. And these guys are reaching out more and more into the European space in order to capture some kind of regulatory shelter and protection. And it's not a big step from being a B2C cryptocurrency provider unregulated into a DLT end-to-end -end regulated institutional product offering. So from that direction, SIX felt from one side there is some kind of necessity so we should look into this area a bit more precisely. And on the other side, in the parallel, our competitors, banks, in financial institutions, exchanges, CSDs, were looking into tokenization, digitalization of assets. Um, and again, since we are based in Zurich and we are governed by a, what we would call, digital asset-friendly regulator, um, the threat of somebody else coming into the Swiss market and capturing our business was quite high. So long story short, Six decided we are going to build it ourselves. We rather compete with our classic standardized legacy business on the securities world, and we build a new world in order to see how far it can go. These are a few quotes of people which are senior enough to know what they say. Um, I would be extremely excited if some of these guys would tell the operational levels as well that they should be a bit more active, proactive in order to work with us. But at least it's good to see that um, at least on the management side, senior management side, banks have identified the value of digital asset and digital ledger technology is different from Bitcoin and Ethereum and Ripple. So the technology is great. If a cryptocurrency is great or not, we will see. So a few, um, a few uh, consortiums have emerged out of the past couple of uh, months, maybe years, in order of a business units finding out what can we do, what can we try, is there a proof of concept we can work out, is there some testing the water business going on, um, and as much as we know, I'm traveling around now since 12 months um, proposing our model to financial institutions, I have not seen anybody from a competitive landscape being a stock exchange fully regulated who is as far as we are, and I have not found any model, any business model in terms of digital asset and CSD replaced uh, on DLT, uh, which is further advanced than ours. So what are we? Um, I guess you're all familiar with SIX. SIX owns um, basically the whole value chain of an exchange in, in Switzerland. We have listing and trading under the SIX Swiss exchange. We have a clearing house, we have a settlement and custody entity, and what many don't know is SIX does as well the entire payment services for the Swiss National Bank. So we own on a SIX level end to end the entire value chain. Why in Switzerland, why is this so important? First of all, I said it's, um, it's quite a regulatory friendly environment if you move into digital assets. Secondly, SIX is owned by the majority of the Swiss banks. So when the supervisory board decided, can we go for the SDX project, and all the banks voted for yes, it would be stupid to vote for yes and then don't support us in translating the project into real business. So we are enjoying a quite a good support from the banks. And financial markets have a simple, extremely high value and importance of the Swiss economy, and that's why everybody's trying to push and help us in order to, to, to strengthen SDX positioning in the world. What the overlay of SDX will mean by replacing 
This part in various areas is what we're going to go through now. We have a very ambitious target. Um, we simply want to be the international standard. And we invite our banking partners in setting those international standards together with us. We do not believe that we know our customer bank's business better than they do. So we have the simple ambition to co-create a new business model together with our clients and we are happy to, for everybody who's helping us in setting this up. So first of all, we want to have an international reach. Even though that we are a Swiss legal entity governed and regulated by a Swiss regulator, operating in Swiss francs and in the future on the digital exchange with a digital Swiss franc, it sounds smells, tastes like very much a Swiss business, but it's not. We simply have to start somewhere. We cannot start in Switzerland, in Euroland, in the US, in Asia, everywhere at the same time. So we are going to focus um, to go live uh, next year in the Swiss marketplace, but we have immediately started in parallel to identify potential partners in an international model. All digital assets, should be traded on STX. It is easy to retokenize an existing asset. It's much more cumbersome in creating a new token on something which is not yet existing. We call that a native token. And it's even more important to reach out into those areas which are simply not existing yet. Over 70% of the global wealth is happening in non-bankable assets, which are out of reach for anybody which are extremely difficult to find price. Price discovery, liquidity, change of ownership is extremely cumbersome. All of this takes time, money, people, system, uh, segregation and synchronization of different databases. We have the ambition to trade all digital assets on exchange. We have the full value chain. We are not only the listing venue, we are not helping in issuing tokens, we are as well the CSD. So what SDX will do is we are combining the trading front-end exchange license together with the CSD license. So when you used to trade on six, buy me a thousand Nestle shares, you trade on six, it's settled, it's T plus two, you have custody services, you have collateral to submit for the T, two, T plus two settlement period, is a lot of processes and money which is blocked for something which could be done easier, faster, and lesser risky. So that's the full value chain. We are going to digitalize the entire end-to-end -end process. Very important, B2B. We are not competing with our client bank's business. We don't want to enter into retail space. We do not want to capture your customer's business. We are providing you, as our partners, a ecosystem which offers and enables our member firms to offer additional services, new revenue top pots, new uh, areas of international growth together with us. We don't want your clients, we just want to enable you to gather new businesses. Plus, it's fully regulated. Very important. I don't know to what extent you have followed regulatory discussions in other markets. It sounds easier in Switzerland. I'm not saying it's like a given and a piece of cake, but it is at least, I would say, easier to get a regulatory approval in Switzerland than it is in Germany, France. Don't even talk about the US because it's extremely um, difficult there. When I go to the States and present SDX to US American banks and their first question is, what do your regulators think? And I say, what do you mean regulators? There's only one and he actually likes my business idea. They are completely fast and they believe, I can't believe it. If I say, well, in the US, you probably have to deal with two, three, four regulators of different kinds and then it only works in different states and then if you go into another state, you need another regulator approval. This is much, much easier in Switzerland. So as I said, those are the chains uh, we are going to provide. And what does it bring? Well, first of all, the beauty of DLT and blockchain and electronic and digitization is there is no time limit anymore. There is no batch run at 2 a.m. in the morning that 
enables or disables market participants to transact because the systems are not available. We have the ambition eventually to run 24-7. We know it will be a dream to believe we go live next year and Japanese banks, Chinese banks, Australian banks, Singaporean banks, as much as Brazilian and Americans and Europeans will all be ready at day one. But we have the target to start the operation with 16.7, which means we capture a bit of the Asian trading hours, we capture the full European and US trading hours, and that for seven days a week, uh, five days a week, so 16.5, with the ambition eventually to reach the 24-7 benchmark. What does it bring for our partners and members? Well, first of all, the, um, the simple creation issue and the listing of tokens should add revenue to the bottom line because it is a new business area you're currently not doing. So it, it's an increase of revenue and at the same moment you are decreasing complexity because a lot of traditional activities, post-trade, asset servicing, listing, prospectus, deposit, global certification, and, 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 will be collapsed in a very small amount of digital processes which take a lot of complexity out of the equation. Riskless trading and atomic settlement, let me explain to you what we mean with that. Since we are T-atomic, in the moment the transaction is happening, it is settled. There is no T plus something, not T plus a minute, not a day, not two, not three, is atomic. In the moment you trade, the moment you settle. It's riskless because there is no counterparty failure risk anymore. You don't need to provide collateral for a period of time until you figure out that my transaction is finally gone through the books. The moment you trade, the moment it happens, and that's why you have rather risk. Again, it's a revenue uplift because you save the cost of providing collateral, and on the other side, you take the cost down and you take the risk down because you do not have and you do not carry counterparty risk anymore. How does it work? It can only be atomic if you have a digital cash and a digital asset. So if on the stock exchange, consider two part market members are trading, they're meeting in the order book, the order book freezes. Then there is a check into the DLT and they ask, does bank A have the token assets in their DLT? Yes. Does the buyer have the digital cash in the, depo in the, in the DLT? Yes. Trade confirmed, trade executed, trade settled, confirmation up, order book released, next order comes in. There is no T plus something anymore. There is no CSD. It's all within the DLT. So we remove completely the need for a CCP because there is no risk anymore. Smart asset servicing, every token issued on SDX to carry a smart contract. This is, so to say, the life cycle management rule book for the asset. It says what happens in terms of a corporate action. What happens if the dividend is paid? What happens if a coupon is paid? Do I get the money in fiat? Do I get the money in digital? What happens on maturity date if it's a structured product, for example? What happens if a knockout le uh, uh, level is touched and the product disappears at zero? What are the processes? So all of that will be covered by what we call smart asset servicing. And as well, you can imagine if you run an asset management company and you're executing in a hell of a lot of individual shares, you normally handle different pots of silos of data, which positions do I have in the CSD in the States, in the CSD Clearstream, in the CSD SIS, in the CSD Hong Kong CCAS, 5,000 different databases which you have to synchronize until you find out what is my final position in a stock until I know that is the dividend I receive and then I have to transfer the dividend to the banks who owns the fund and then they have to transfer it to the beneficial owner, the ultimate beneficial owner of the share. That entire process will be digital. The moment the dividend is announced, the book closes, the smart asset recognizes it and payments and transactions are automatically done. That's what we call smart asset servicing. It will be a revolution on the banking side in terms of stuffing masses of people doing synchronization and finding out the true data. There is only one true data. 
everything which is in our DLT is true and it's the only data. There is no second opinion about it. That's my favorite slide. So SDX will run what we call a permissioned blockchain. A permissioned blockchain means we only accept reputable, licensed, institutional members to enter into our network. Every member firm must hold at least a Swiss broker dealer license or a bank license or an asset management license or what, but anything that makes it worthwhile. And then we're using R3 Corda as our enterprise blockchain. Every member firm can decide, do I run my own node or does SDX run my node? I can do it myself, but they can outsource the service to us and we run your node. So all these banks, they all run their own node and all transactions between those banks are done on SDX, which means it's an on-exchange transaction. So SDX will act as a notificary function of the transaction. Every time two market members trade against each other, and it is a non-exchange transaction, SDX will see the transaction and confirms that this is a good one. Plus, the regulator will run the node as well. You might be aware that normally every transaction on exchange triggers a post-trade reporting of a transaction to the regulators. This means you don't need to have to report anything anymore because the regulator sees the node and has access into your transactions anyway. So, riskless trading, smart asset servicing, creation or listing, plus the key and wallet management, all done in a network. That does not mean that every transaction has to be an on-exchange transaction. If you are a bank, let's take the light blue color, and you transact with another bank on a bilateral basis outside the exchange, call it OTC trading. You can still use the SDX ecosystem. You can still book, settle your transactions, pay them with our digital token on the network, but the product never reaches the exchange. It will be a bilateral execution between two business partners. Could be one-to-one, -one, could be one-to-many, it could still happen outside the exchange. We are not, well, we love to have exchanges on exchange, but if you think uh, it's happened outside the exchange, then it's happened outside the exchange. And plus, every transaction will finally be paid with a digital Swiss franc. We are in discussions with the Swiss National Bank in order to launch a digital Swiss franc token. It will be commercial money, it not central bank money, because the issuer of the digital Swiss franc is not uh, the SMB, the issuer is SDX. So member bank comes to us because we as exchange and CSD have to run an account with the national bank. They come to us, they give us 100 Swissies, we give them 100 Swissy tokens, they transact on SDX, we deposit the cash with the bank. When they don't want to trade anymore, they give us the tokens back, we give them the cash back. We believe that is the smartest and probably most stable currency coin we can offer these days, unless the central bank decides to issue commercial, uh, central bank money in token format, then we don't need to go the extra loop with the digital cash. So in a regulated environment, those are the products which are currently listing, and we believe it's simply a cost play. Yeah? We believe SDX can operate existing assets simpler, faster, and cheaper than uh, currently. New asset means we are entering, as I described it earlier on, what we call the non-bankable assets. We have a lot of interest from commercial property, people calling from Australia asking, can I tokenize my sheep farm in Australia? People from Malaysia want to tokenize their palm oil plantage. I mean, you cannot imagine what kind of areas of, 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 of interest come across us. And it's good because we, we love additional business and this is where this technology brings value. I don't think personally that a digital exchange adds a lot of value when it comes into extremely highly efficient, fully electronic exchanges. We will never be able to match the speed of Xetra, high frequency trading, Eurex futures. There's, no, there's nothing to gain for us and there's nothing to gain for our clients. But the, the lesser frequent the product trades, 
the more cumbersome the issuance process is, consider issuing a bond, it's a nightmare, and trading secondary market a bond is a nightmare. This is where our business model will bring relief and happiness. To conclude those factors, um, as I said, there's only what's actually, why should it be on DLT? Well, there's only one source of data, which we believe is an extremely important point. Um, secondly, the riskless trading and atomic settlement can only happen on DLT, it cannot happen elsewhere. The elimination of the counterparty risk will be very much loved by a lot of uh, our member firm's risk officers. And uh, at the end of the day, the asset universe is going to increase substantially. Imagine you enter into a small mid-cap equity area where currently as a small and mid-sized corporate, if you go to a bank looking for an IPO classic style, the banker asks you how heavy is your company, what's your market cap, and you tell them, look, I'm looking for $50 million. They're going to have a laugh and they go. They will never be able to make a $50 million IPO economically worthwhile for a bank because the administrative cost, the legal cost, compliance, production, everything is going to be so expensive, they will never make money out of a small IPO. We call the process of digitalization of small asset, uh, small corporates, we call it IDO, it's an initial digital offering. And there again are two different layers. First one is a company is mature enough to IDO and they want to go the new electronic way of doing a, 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 a share sale, for example. It's basically kind of a, the ICO technology combined with the IPO regulatory framework. Um, but since we're not dealing in coins and we don't like the word ICO anymore, that's why we call it IDO. But ineffectively, it is the IPO process digital. Um, and we want to break down the minimum ticket size. We want to bring business that currently happens in the World Wide Web, in shadow markets. There is a lot of financing, first round, second round. There's a lot of financing happening outside exchanges, outside regulatory umbrellas, and we want to bring that market back into more light, into more transparency, and into more regulatory framework. So a $50 million IDO should very much be interesting for every bank in order to say, yes, I'm happy to help you. I am your issue agent. I bring your product to the market. I'm not responsible for the secondary market activity and I don't know if your company exists in six years time from now, but I can help you in bringing your, market, your product to, uh, live to the market. Definitely a new asset universe that is going to grow out of, out of the SDX world. And why should you do it with us and not with somebody else? Well, I hope I have given you already some of the answers, but um, as I said, the international reach is important. There is this kind of trusted partner business. If you don't know your business partner because you operate in a private, no, in a public chain, and you don't know who your business partners are, and you don't know how the assets ever occurred in the public chain, you have no idea of KYC, money laundering, where does the assets come from, is it tax clean, is it tax evasion, what is it all about? This is the solution for a trusted partner business. We don't want to risk our license, our members don't want to risk our license, and our regulator will keep a very close eye on what we're doing, so we believe um, this is uh, for sure uh, among the best offers we currently see in the marketplace. Plus the end-to-end -end solution is something which is, doesn't exist. I mean, if you go in your head through the landscape of exchanges, which exchange currently on the planet offers listing, trading, custody, clearing, payments? I help you, there are not many. There are not many, and the few others, then not named six, have not yet the braveness, I would say, to do it. Right? I mean, we, six is in a kind of cannibalizing their own business. And they are very clear in their mind, they know what they're doing, but it's better that they move it, revenue from left to right, rather than somebody else takes it from the left and disappears elsewhere. So this is um, what we believe a good thing. Where does it go? 
those are kind of the three, um, the three areas of development in the next couple of years. We are basically currently in, in light blue, um, and uh, I don't want to yeah, jump in a second. So this is uh, next year, go live, market on sedation, see how it all goes, and then in the long term, settling down, increased reach. I mean, I've talked to a few other exchanges on the planet over the last, well, yesterday and today. There's a lot of interest in what we do. There might be synergies with others. Why do you all reinvent the wheel again? I think once we've done it and explored it and it works and it's proven, um, there is a good chance that somebody will jump on our technology and does it with us and help us reaching out into new markets. Finally, this is um, ty type of the timeline we have. So we are basically here. Um, we have identified a handful of use cases. For every use case, we have a bank who is willing to execute the use case with us. We have uh, stabilized, created um, technical readiness with those partners. We are building products. We are learning, we're testing, we find hurdles which we didn't see before. Um, we have to pass them by and see for alternative solutions. So this is what, we, what I meant earlier on in saying, help us in creating because we can't create it ourselves. Um, we are gonna build and increase the product reach uh, beginning next year and finally we want to go live end of next year and over the course over the next 12 months there will be iterations of additional products, additional members, additional uh, services um, and I promise you you will hear about our progress in the public space over the next 12 months. And one more thing, um, you just saw it, autumn 2019, uh, maybe you have seen our press release yesterday, as of coming Friday, our first prototype is going live. We have worked hard over the last 12 months when SDX was first announced by our CEO of the Six Exchange, Tom Z. Bin Zybos in Australia last year. He actually promised we're gonna go live in July 19. It took until the end of September, but I think we were still quite in a good time frame in order to deliver. Um, we have found a product, we've created a product, we found a partner, a big, big, big Swiss bank who is helping us in working this all out. They can automate, automatically issue a token through one of the technical services six currently uses as well. This is the main story. Six has such a great infrastructure and we can lobby and piggy pack on the infrastructure. If I go to Morgan Stanley and tell them you need to put a new line into the Swiss market, you need to build a new API connectivity, you need to create a new exchange segment, you need to do new, new, new. We are talking two and a half years until we find a common agreement on contracts. This SDX world very much uses the proven six ecosystem. The, the pipeline into the platform is the same. The front end trading engine Nasdaq Extreme is the same. The only differentiation is we are adding a few more fields on the API so the system recognizes an order in a token and not an order in a security classic style. That's all we do. So the onboarding process for the existing um, six members is pretty much inexistent. They have it. It takes a few days until this little gig is done. So it's more about how does the product create? How is it monitored in the system? How does the product and the position be visible in my risk reporting? What do I have to do? How does it end up in my client's portfolios and so on? This is what we develop, but it's now the first time we have a product. It goes through, it can be traded. The only trick which is not yet happening is the digital cash because the digital Swiss franc does not exist yet. So we, we tweak the system by providing the settlement functionality in fiat and simply declare it being digital, but it's not really. So we are still in a prototype case. Yeah. So this is what it is. With this, I would like to thank you very much. It's spot on 1330. I think if we have questions, please hurry up because otherwise we run out of time here. Thank you very much for your attention.
if you have any questions.